here for an on-the-ground look at real estate in the Bay Area is DeLeon Realty Group CEO Michael Repka. Michael, welcome. Good to have you with us. What are you seeing? Are you seeing prices softening uh, as dramatically as those numbers suggest? Uh, yes, Tyler, we are. Uh, the market's a bit bifurcated, but certainly for people that are stretching to get in, it's really expensive, especially in light of the interest rates. And what about very high-end homes priced in the multi-million dollars? Are they still moving? Is there an issue with uh, liquidity there that's restricting uh, buyers at all? They are still moving. Uh, in fact, the higher-end market, higher end market homes above $5 million are actually holding up a bit better uh, than uh, homes in more of the entry level, which is crazy as it is. Silicon Valley entry level is typically in like two to $3 million range. Uh, those homes are the ones that are facing the most challenges. Why is that? I think it's a matter of uh, just uh, you know, other financial resources that come to play. Uh, people that are buying a home that's eight or $10 million, they oftentimes can uh, you know, afford to arrange the financing uh, you know, through other channels, or they're not stretching quite as much. Mm -hmm. But people that are looking to uh, get into an area, such as Palo Alto for its schools, mm -hmm. uh, if they're really stretching, the difference between a $15,000 a month mortgage and a $27,000 a month mortgage is prohibitive. We teased earlier, Michael, what does $3 million buy you in the San Francisco area? And what's the answer these days? If you're looking at prime areas in Silicon Valley, uh, it's still probably a three-bedroom, two-bathroom home on a 6,500-square-foot lot. Uh, it's really not something that um, is going to be the type of estate that people may imagine from other parts of the country. Right. It's, uh, it, it's average. And I mean, that affordability issue. So we were talking to Austin, a realtor there yesterday, and you guys are kind of two sides of the coin. Obviously, a lot of people left high cost areas, moved to lower cost ones where he says they can still be, you know, coders, engineers, work from home. They're not getting called back. What do you see in terms of are you getting any boomerang effect of people who are coming in to buy houses now who might have left and, and have to come back? Or are you not seeing that? Well, Kelly, we're still seeing far more people moving out of the area than moving back. There have been some, you know, California is a great place to live. There are so many nice things about it. And there are some people that move out and then they decide that they want to come back. But when you consider the cost of housing, the, the overall cost of living, uh, the um, expense related to housing payments, most notably the interest, uh, it's, you know, it's tough for people to afford. Uh, but if they move to other areas like Scottsdale or uh, parts of Nevada, uh, they find it, they could get a lot more house and the payments are more reasonable. Plus, COVID has created flexibility with people's work arrangement that wasn't there a while ago. So who is still buying? And do you think the prices are going to drop? I anticipate we're still going to see softness. We're going to see prices dropping in some of the prime areas. Uh, again, since COVID happened, a lot of people are changing their lifestyle. So um, we're finding that uh, quite a few people are moving out of San Francisco down to Silicon Valley. Uh, we don't do any sales in, so in San Francisco, but we've been advertising all of our homes up there just for that reason. And um, we're finding people that are in some of the closer in areas, Palo Alto, Menlo Park, they're moving to uh, the areas that are a little further away, uh, Portola Valley. Um, some of them are moving outside of the immediate area, but still within 20 or 30 miles. And then people that are towards retirement, Many of those people are moving out of state altogether.